In 1881, Chester A. Arthur completed the most unlikely of political comebacks, only three years after being removed in disgrace from his post as chief collector of the New York Custom House, he now found himself, by virtue of assassination, President of the United States. Number 21, Chester A. Arthur, Republican, 1881 to 1885, 51 years old, from New York. Arthur may have been a native of Vermont, but he was indisputably a New Yorker. He was someone who could pick out a good bottle of wine. He ate very well. He was a gourmand. He enjoyed drinking at, at the finest restaurants and in the most exclusive clubs. Arthur was a bit of a dandy, a bit of a peacock. He was incredibly meticulous about how he dressed. He bought the latest fashions, and he was able to live a gilded age life. Unlike many of the figures in that era, Chet Arthur did not have the full beard but he did have uh, full sideburns, which was certainly a distinguishing feature. Arthur looked like a president. In 1880, when he was elected vice president, Arthur had celebrated in his own way with a shopping spree at Brooks Brothers. In addition to being a high-living New York party animal, Arthur was also an avid fisherman. He took frequent fishing trips with his pal, New York senator and political boss, Roscoe Conkling. Arthur's management style was an offshoot of his personality. Arthur did not like to work hard. He is somebody who was routinely described as strolling into the Oval Office at 10, meeting with people, signing some papers, going for a ride or a walk at around 4 in the afternoon, taking a nap, and having dinner quietly with family and friends. Some people might perceive that to be kind of a lazy man's uh, presidency, but uh, actually he's very efficient during those hours. But then after 4 o'clock, that it was time now to relax. A White House staffer would later recall that President Arthur never did today what he could put off until tomorrow. Unlike most presidents of his era, moving into the White House felt like a social demotion to Arthur. Arthur came into the White House and says, I will not live in this house. And Arthur insists that the White House become renovated spent many months renovating and one of the people he employs to renovate the White House is a very young Lewis Comfort Tiffany. With the White House restored, Arthur set about restoring the faded Washington party scene. His wife had died in 1880, so the president's sister was his social hostess. Wine, champagne, hard liquor made a reappearance in the White House under Chet Arthur. And he brings that style to the White House. Garfield didn't have enough time to really place his stamp on the Washington social scene. And the Hayes's had not exactly wowed anyone with their social panache. A product of the corrupt New York machine, Arthur knew that he had to convince the country he was more than just a political hack. To do this, he would have to make a painful break with his old faction and its leader, his dear friend, Roscoe Conklin. Much to the chagrin of Conkling and his faction, Chet Arthur really became a reformer, one of the great ironies in American presidential history. The man who was a product of the spoil system of New York uh, fought against it. It is the Nixon going to China syndrome. Usually the representative of the old system is in the best position to change that system. In 1883, Arthur signed the Pendleton Act which was the first strong piece of civil service reform legislation. As one former colleague from New York observed, he is no longer Chet Arthur, he is the president. The other important achievement of the Arthur administration was a much needed upgrading of the United States Navy. The Navy by this point was considered to be an international joke. It had maybe three ships capable of standing up against the modern navies of the world. And the president took some action began the building of a modern fleet of steel ships with rifle guns on their decks. So the only way you fight the Spanish-American War in 1898 is by having a navy that had been based on foundations established by Arthur in 1882 and 1883. Having risen to the presidency through assassination, Arthur would never get the opportunity to win his own term. 
denied the party's nomination in 1884, he died two years later from a kidney ailment that he had secretly battled throughout his administration. Arthur ends up being a much better president than most people had expected him to. He was a competent president in a time when competency was really all that most people either expected or wanted from the presidency. Only 20 years removed from the Civil War, it was remarkable how much the presidency had changed. The strength of the office had been tested by assassinations, scandals, impeachment, and a highly disputed election. By the late 1800s, the presidency didn't seem to matter much, and a good deal of executive power had been ceded to Congress. But in the years to come, the men destined to inherit the presidency would reassert the powers lost during these years and turn America into a major player on the world stage.